Oh, hi, peeps, and uh, it's Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. Not feeling 100%, but hey, we have to soldier on. If I wait until I'm 100% every day, I wouldn't be doing any vlogs. So sometimes I just try to soldier on regardless. Today, I wanted to talk about the new legislation that's coming out on the 2nd of March. Um, that means that anyone who drives in central London will have the 20 mile per hour driving limit imposed on them. All the roads are going to have a 20 miles per hour limit. Now, <clears throat> if you're in the States, try to imagine what it must be like to be driving 31 kilometers an hour. Or I think your median is 46 kilometers an hour. But what happens is, is that you consider that quite slow. So can you imagine driving at 30 kilometres an hour? Well, that is what the UK government is telling us we have to do. As of next week, all the drivers who drive in central London, and it's not just in central London, it's outside London as well. When I say outside London, like the London borough of Brent, which goes near to where my mum lives, which is the Neesdens, the Halsdens of this world, northwest London and southwest London and um, north London, all of those have 20 mile per hour speed limits. And, you know, you might as well just stop. I was going to my mum over the weekend and I was driving on the 20 mile per limit and I had somebody honking behind me. And I'm like, if you want to overtake me, overtake me. You know what I mean? But 20 miles per hour is like you're not driving anywhere. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's like almost like they're trying to get you frustrated. Traf Transport for London, I don't know what the hell they're thinking. Maybe they don't have to drive. Maybe they drive in the country. Maybe they don't live in London. So it doesn't really affect them. Or maybe they have, um, they drive, they're um, chauffeur driven. So they don't have to worry. They sit in the back, read their newspapers and do whatever they want. So the speed limit doesn't affect them. I'm not saying that we should all go around speeding. But what I am saying is that when I took my driving test, which was in, I think, early 70s, I took my driving test, 30 miles per hour was considered safe. And it was, they said 30 miles per hour was the safe limit and less likely to kill somebody um, as opposed to driving 40 miles or 50 miles an hour. So how can that now change from 30 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour? What's changed? What Out of all those dynamics, what has changed? 30 miles an hour is 30 miles an hour. So now what they're saying is 37% of, of um, deaths and serious injuries are done by speeding. I'm sure they're not speeding at 30 miles an hour. But they don't say that bit. They keep that bit out. And they just say, oh, it's due to speeding. 30 miles an hour is not speeding if you're in a 30 mile per hour um, limit. If you're in a 30 miles per hour zone. How can that be speeding? So now they're going to take it right down to 20 miles per hour. Under the guise of this new... Um, project Zero, Vision Zero Project. I mean, they come up with all these fancy names. Vision Zero Project. They have a vision of seeing zero, um, zero accidents due to speeding, zero serious injuries due to speeding. That is their vision. And they're also proposing to spend 2.2 billion on London roads to make them safer to walk on. Why don't they use those 2.2 billion pounds to house the homeless who are actually living on the streets and have got nowhere to live? You've got 2.2 billion to waste on 
fixing roads in London that have nothing wrong with them. People can walk, people have been walking up and down these roads for decades. Nothing wrong with the roads. Yet you want to invest 2.2 billion on London roads instead of putting it to better use. Absolutely ridiculous. Who comes up with these? Who comes up with these ideas? Honestly, I think they have got somebody in a room that, that, that they're sitting there thinking, how can we make it more difficult, more frustrating for our Londoners? What can we do to make it um, more uncomfortable? I think that's what they do. I think there's somebody sitting in a room thinking how difficult they can make it. Because 20 miles per hour is ludicrous. Now in central London, if there's a lot of traffic, you're probably doing 20 miles per hour anyway. But, you know, if there's no traffic, I'm sure the maximum you can do in central London is 30 miles an hour anyway. And if there is an accident, it's not going to be because somebody's speeding. It's because you have some of these pedestrians who've got earphones in their, in their, they've got plugs in their ears. They're listening to music. They're on their phone. They're not paying attention. And sometimes they just jump out in front of a car. How the hell are you going to stop that anyway, whether you're going 20 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour? But what they're saying is it's, Five times more likely to kill somebody if you're going at 30 than if you're going at 20. No onus is put on the pedestrian at all. What about the pedestrian's responsibility? You're always finding pedestrians walking in front of cars as though they own the, as though they own the road. Some of them, they don't even look up. Some of them are crossing the road. They've got the earphones in. They're looking at their thing and they're crossing the road. They're not even looking. What about their responsibility? Why is all the onus being put on the driver? I don't get it. There's nothing we can do about it, peeps. I mean, I need to tell you this just in case you don't know, just in case you're going to central London. And the thing is, is like I said, it's not just central London. They, they're actually um, promoting that it's in central London in the congestion zones, but if you've driven outside, if you've driven in North London or South London, you know that those 20 mile per hour zones are everywhere. And what does it do? It gives them more money, doesn't it? Because you know they're going to have cameras everywhere. So it's going to give them more money and it's going to give them well, more revenue. That's the main thing. It's going to probably get people frustrated and it wouldn't even be so bad if... Um, the uh, transport was competitive if it was cheap to take public transport. I mean, in America, it's so cheap to take public transport. But in, in England, they reckon it's one of the most expensive places to take public, trans, trans, public transport next to France and Germany. You know, can you imagine if I want to go to London... It will cost like £13. That's equivalent to maybe about $20, 20 US dollars. I can make that same trip from Brooklyn to Queens. One, well, it might be about $2 now. I don't know how much it is. I haven't been on Metro for ages. But you can do an equivalent for $2. Equivalent same distance journey. It might even be further. I don't understand how one country can justify charging so much and another, and another country charges so little for transportation. But anyway, I think I've covered most of this like I said if you're watching this from America my American subscribers try to imagine driving at 30.2 kilometers an hour and see what that feels like I can imagine the traffic jams because 
um, the other day they um, reduced the, the speed limit. Normally on the M1, the speed limit is 70 miles an hour and they reduced it to 40 miles an hour, the backup. Not because there was anything holding up. There was no accident, nothing. They reckon that they reduce the speed limit because of eco emissions. So they allow all the traffic to back up for no valid reason whatsoever. Why? Because they've reduced it to 40 miles an hour. And the same will happen on our roads when we're driving 20 miles an hour. People will be simpering along behind each other, holding up the traffic. What is that going? How is that going to benefit anyone? How? How does anybody benefit? If they said 80% of the people um, had been killed because they were dry, uh, killed by people driving at 30 miles an hour, or they had 80% um, of people have serious injuries, uh, drivers um, driving 30 miles an hour, then I could understand. But 37%. And it just says speeding. It doesn't say at what speed. And based on that, they're reducing the whole of London to 20 miles an hour. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. But there, this is just my opinion. Who am I? Who am I? Anyway, central London, for those of you who want to know what central London covers, especially if you're out of the UK, um, it covers Bermondsey, Bethnal Green, Finsbury, Holborn, Shoreditch, Southwark, Stepney, Marylebone, Westminster. But like I said, areas in Brent, Neasden, Halsden, all those places, they have 20 miles per hour. Places in Tottenham have 20 miles an hour. And I know places in Croydon have 20 miles an hour. So it's all over the place, basically. And I'm not even sure if they've had a chance to paint all the roads with 20 miles per hour. So just be careful. I'm just putting you on the alert. You may already know, but it's better to be forewarned is forearmed. And it's better to have this information than not to know anything about it. And I think that is all I am going to say for now. Ciao for now. Bye bye.